5x. <clears throat> Again, from 0 to 2. So, same thing. Let's just see what's going on here. Okay. All right, first graph we already did earlier, right, in the first one. So, y equals 2x. So, we get 0, 2, and 2 goes to 4. So, we know it's this here. Okay. And now we graph this one. So same thing. x equals 0, we get 0. If x equals 1, we get negative 5. So 5. And if x equals 2, we get negative, uh, negative 10. So way down here. So let's shoot way down there. So essentially, we want the area of this really big triangle. Now, believe it or not, we can actually use a uh, geometry, right? We, since it's a triangle, we can just find the area of a triangle, which is just one-half base times height. Uh, we can figure out the height. It's pretty simple. It's just two. The base is the difference from here to there, which, again, you can also calculate pretty straightforward, right? This is the point um, 2, comma 4, so a distance of 4 here. And here is a distance of 10, so this is the point 2, comma negative 10. So that distance is going to be 14. So the area is one half the base, which is going to be 14, times the height, which is 2. So that's one way to fig uh, actually figure it out when it comes to it. Okay. So that gives you just 14. So let's see if it actually gets to the same thing if we do it uh, the calculus way. So this is going to be an integral from 0 to 2, where the top function is this one here, which is 2x minus the bottom function, which is going to be that. So minus 5x dx. So notice this becomes, like I said earlier, right, when it's underneath, Notice the answer ends up being positive, so this is going to be positive 5x. So 2x plus another 5x gives you a total of 7x. And now we just take the integral. So that's going to be 7x squared over 2. And notice that's the one half where it comes from the, the area of a, area of a um, triangle. Evaluated at 0 and 2. Okay. Plug it in. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 7 is 28, divided by 2, gives you 14. And then plug in 0 gives you 0, so our area is 14, which is the same if we just do it geometrically. Crazy, huh? So fun little uh, question if you guys are wondering based off that information there. Okay. All right, let's keep going. A couple more examples before we go on to the next topic at hand. Okay. So next question is find the area of the region uh, bounded by the curve's cosine of x and y equals 2 minus cosine of x. So very, very similar graphs. Uh, if you guys remember, right, the negative, so it's going to go the opposite direction of the regular cosine. And again, bounded between now this time 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So I kind of give you guys a hint. Uh, you got to figure out which one is above, which one's actually below. And it's actually going to probably uh, tease you which one it is. So let's just quickly draw this to see what's going on. So we'll do the major parts. Half pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Because that's our endpoints, right? 0 and 2 pi. Right. So let's just draw uh, draw the first one, cosine of x. So do remember cosine of x starts at 1 and negative 1. So it's bounded between 1 and negative 1. So cosine of 0 is actually 1. And it just follows this template here. I'm just going around the unit circle. Okay. So let's draw 2 minus cosine of So again, if cosine is 0, so plug in co uh, 0 for into, co into cosine for x, that gives you 1, and 2 minus 1 is just 
1. So they both start here. However, since it's negative, you actually go in the opposite direction. You're going to go above and then slowly come back down here. Because now if you go plug in pi over 2, well, pi over 2 here is just 0. So 2 minus 0 is 0. So this goes up to 2. There. So it like this. And it comes back around. So cosine of pi is negative 1. So 2 minus 1 gives you positive. So 2 plus 1 gives you 3. So this goes up all the way to 3, actually. It's a big old circle. And eventually it'll come back down in a touch right there. So essentially we'll want this chunk of the area here. So now you can see which one's definitely above the graph, right? So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi. There's the area of 2 minus cosine x minus the bottom function, which is the cosine of x dx. So putting these together gives you the integral of 2 minus 2 cosine of x dx. And now you're just using power rule and our quick little uh, trig portion here, right? So integral of 2x is going to be 2x squared over 2. Oh, what am I talking about? Oh, way off there. Good thing we weren't in class. And what in the world talking about, right? So it's just 2, 2x, right, for the first one. Here, it's going to be minus. And again, if you're not sure, you can always go back. Integral of cosine is positive sign. So this one down here is going to be negative 2 sine of x evaluated at 0 and 2 pi. Okay. Alright, so now we just plug in. So plug in 2 pi, that's going to give you 4 pi. Plug in here, sine of 2 pi is 0, so this is a big fat 0. Minus, plug in 0, it gives you 0. Plug in 0, this also gives you 0. So this is just 4 pi is the area between the bounded series. Okay. And there we go. That's our last example for uh, bounded between two parts so far. Okay. All right, so next thing we're going to talk about is, well, what if we don't know which is above and which is below? Or actually, before we do that, um, I want to talk about, in general, uh, the general area between two curves. That's the very, very important stuff uh, topic when it comes to, to play. So, in general, if we have both functions that oscillate, so remember, oscillating means like, you know, the cosine sine functions, they do this. So that's oscillation, just goes up and down, up and down with no, you know, continuous flow. So let's suppose we have two oscillating functions where one is at top of one function and at the bottom, and they just, you know, they flip around depending on how far you go into it. So an example of what I mean by that is something like this. So let's suppose we have from A to B. Now let's say this is G of X here and this is F of X down there. So notice they oscillate at different parts. So here, this is F of X here. I'm just trying to make it pink so you guys can see the difference. I made it pink to begin with. It's okay. There you go. So notice it oscillates, right? At, from here to here, f of x on top and g of x is in the bottom, and vice versa. So it kind of breaks up into three regions. So let's say like s1, s2, and s3. <clears throat> so what we have to do to find the total area underneath these curves is actually take three different integrals at those three parts. If we were to find the integral from A to, let's say, A1, and then from A sub 1 to A sub 2, and then the integral from A sub 2 to, to B itself. So we take the integral from A to A1 of the difference between F minus G, plus the integral from A1 to A2, again, we're now when G of X is minus F of X, and then finally the integral from A sub 2 to B, again, from f of x minus g of x itself. So it's a sum of all of them put together. Or, in more general terms, right, because that's uh, that's actually the definition of the absolute value. 
So which gives us our general formula for area between two curves. It is the area between curves f of x and g of x is just the integral from a to b of the absolute value of the difference between the two functions. Right? So well, you know, the, the geometric explanation is exactly what the absolute value does right? when it comes to it. Okay. So let's try an example so you can see how this actually work out. Okay. So example three says find the area of the region bounded by the curves y equals um, sine x and y equals cosine of x from and y equals x and y equals pi. So remember, uh, x equals 0 and x equals pi are your bounds, right? So going from one to the other itself. So let's see what's happening here. So let's just draw a quick little curve, see what's going on here. And then we'll go from our integration. Okay, so again, we'll just do from 0 to pi. So the only major one is pi over 2 in the middle, right? So let's see. So sine. So sine of 0 is a 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, and sine of pi is 0. So this kind of goes in the arc this way. Okay. 